I'd like to call us back into order here for uh, Tuesday, April 21st in our regular meeting. And uh, we're now to public works in our agenda, item 14A, which is order 15-14-21-10, in the matter of setting a public hearing for the proposed surrender of a portion of West 6th Avenue, County Road number 870 to the City of Junction City. And we have Mr. Blomay. Good afternoon, commissioners. <coughs> um, I'm here this afternoon in the matter of setting a public hearing uh, for the proposed surrender of a portion. Jay, it, I'm going to pull the mic down. Or get it. Yeah, there you go. They're directional. <laughs> they're loud, but they're directional. <laughs> um, I'm here this afternoon in the matter of setting a public hearing for the proposed surrender of a portion of West 6th Avenue to the city of Junction City. Junction City has requested surrender of a portion of West 6th Avenue located within an annexed portion of the city limits of Junction City. As required by ORS 373.270, it is required that a date for a public hearing be set to allow testimony to be entered into the public record. Our office would like to propose a date of June 2nd, 2015 at 1.30 p.m. for the public hearing. This date would give our office sufficient time to provide proper notification and postings in the manner and time frames uh, required by law. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn this matter over to the board for continued discussion. Any uh, questions of staff on this? Uh, I don't have any questions, so if I just move approval of the order, that'll set it for June 2nd at 1.30? Yes. Okay, so I move approval of order 15-14-21-10. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimous. And looks like we get to keep you up there. Resolution in order 15 Dash 14 dash 21 dash 11 in the matter of setting a public hearing for the proposed vacation of a portion of Irving Road, County Road number 2254. Mr. Bonnet. Um Yes, uh, we'd like to set a date for a public hearing for the proposed vacation of a portion of right of way along Irving Road uh, located between Prairie Road and the Northwest Expressway. Uh, this vacation is by resolution, meaning that it is being initiated by Lane County. ORS Chapter 368.346 requires all vacations by resolutions to hold a public hearing to allow testimony to be entered into the public record. The Roads Advisory Committee heard this matter on March 25, 2015 and favorably recommended moving ahead with setting a public hearing for consideration of this vacation. Our office would like to propose a date of June 2, 2015 at 1.30 p.m for the public hearing. Uh, this date would give our office sufficient time to provide proper notification and postings in the manner and time frames required by law. And that's all I have. Any questions for staff? If not, do I have a motion? Commissioner Stewart. I'd like to move approval, approval of uh, resolution in order 15-14-21-11. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Bonnet. Thank you, commissioners. That moves us to item C, which is order 15-14-21-12, in the matter of electing whether or not to hear an appeal of a hearings official's decision denying a request for planning director review for a home occupation for an event center venue for weddings, retirements, anniversaries, graduations, banquets, family reunions, meetings, dinners, and gatherings within the impacted forest land zone pursuant to Lane Code Criteria Chapter 16.2. 211 3N, and uh, we have uh, Dina Wright and uh, Mr. Clark here for this one, I believe. So, just to clarify, um, the title is a little incorrect. It states that it's a 
I'd like to hear an appeal of a hearings official decision denying a request for a planning director's review. It should read, appeal of a hearings official decision denying a request for a home occupation special use permit. And that's just to clarify that order. Um, we'll, we'll make that correction when we get to the order stage, whatever that order happens to be. Okay, Change thank the you. order. The planning director did deny the decision and the hearings official upheld the director's denial. So, so from, for some background on the item, the subject property is identified as tax lot 101 of assessor's map 180506, subsection 40. The approximate 40-acre subject property is located east of the city of Anita and north of Fleck Road at address 25519 Fleck Road. The property is developed with one dwelling, septic system, well, two agricultural buildings, one, is, one of which is named the pavilion, a gazebo, a 30 by 30 foot structure, and a 25 by 20 foot, tw 25 by 25 foot structure called the pond house. The property is zoned impacted forest lands F2 zone. There are some aerial photos and the applicant site plan is in the attachments six and seven of staff's memo. The application is a special use permit home occupation and was submitted to the planning department on June 13, 2014. The home occupation is a request of an events venue for weddings, events, retirements, anniversaries, graduations, banquets, family reunions, <coughs> meetings, dinners, and gatherings. The applicant proposes two, excuse me, two categories for events, main events and floating events. Based on the proposal in any given week, there is a maximum of four events up to 250 people. Not all events will include music or loud crowds as indicated by the applicant. The home occupation will be operated by Andrew Head, the resident of the property. Although there are several buildings on the subject property, only the pavilion and pond house will be utilized for the home occupation. The pavilion was permitted as an agricultural building under permit 509 PA 13-05645 as a, and is approximately 360 feet northeast of the dwelling. The application was deemed complete on July 8, 2014, and referral notices were mailed to adjacent property owners and ag agencies on July 15, 2014. The owner held three events on the property during the month of August 2014. A complaint was received and a land use compliance case was initiated on August 13, 2014 in the Land Management Division. On October 31st, 2014, the planning director issued a denial of the request and the applicant appealed the decision. On January 8th, the hearings official held an evidentiary hearing. The hearings official issued his decision on March 2nd, 2015, affirming the planning director's decision denying the application. Two appeals of the hearings official decision were submitted. One appeal is from Kim O'Day, representing the applicant owner, Andrew Head was submitted, and the other appeal from Sean Malone representing Land Watch, Lane County, and others was submitted. The hearings official chose not to reconsider his decision and staff mailed a notice of an elect to hear or not to hear the appeal with the board, which brings us to this meeting today. On deciding whether or not to hear the appeal, the decision criteria is directed by Lane Code Chapter 14.6. 600 subsection 3. There are four separate criteria and staff found that it met two of them. These were explained on pages 9 through 13 of the staff memo. The issues we believe that are criteria related centered around noise and traffic impacts and the conversion of agricultural buildings to other uses. Staff believes the issues on noise and traffic are of countywide significance because home occupation, wedding event, venue requests over several different zoning classifications in the county. And noise and traffic are typically two of the top serious concerns in the neighborhood. Additionally, as addressed in the memo, analysis shows home occupations for wedding events is a trending and recurrent land use application request in land management division. As to converting an agricultural building to another use, the applicant proposes to convert one of his existing agricultural buildings to the proposed main building for the event venue. The applicant's representative from Red Walk believes <coughs> Lane County does not allow the conversion of agricultural buildings to be converted to another use, but they did not give a citation. 
Lane County has historically allowed the conversion of agricultural buildings to other uses. The code does not prevent the conversion, so it is not an uncommon request. Since Lane County allows for the conversion of ag buildings, this issue will recur with frequency. So the re relevant elector here criteria of Lane Code 14.600 is subsection 3A, the issue of, is of countywide significance, and B, the issue will recur with frequency. Therefore, the planning director did recommend the board hear the appeal. However, the board is not compelled to hear the case just because the standard is met. If you agree with the hearing's official analysis, you can choose to expressly adopt the hearing's official decision on your own, this is option two, or you can simply approve the hearing's official decision and let LUBA decide whether the hearing's official's interpretation is correct, which is option three. If it's the board's choice for option two or three, staff can return with the revised order. In relation to the context of the appeal items, the appellant applicant owner believes that the hearing's official erred on issues dealing with noise and traffic as detailed in my staff memo. The appellant representing Landwatch and others believes the decision should be denied as related to the 17 issues they raised in their appeal. The way to think about the appeal arguments is how they impact the board's decision on whether or not to hear the appeal as they relate to the decision criteria and not the approval criteria. As to the noise issue, the applicant appellant argues that because his proposal meets Lane Code Chapter 5.615 noise standards, then by that definition, his proposal cannot unreasonably interfere with the uses of nearby lands. The hearings official concluded that just because you meet Lane Code 5.615 does not mean you <coughs> have the unreasonably interfere criteria for this home occupation proposal. The hearings official believes that the applicant's noise study was partly flawed because it did not measure the ambient noise impact to the neighborhood before the event and during the event. The appellant asserts the HO adopted this interpretation that is not consistent with an interpretation already made by the board in 2002. As to the traffic issue, the hearings official concluded that a 25% increase of up to four times a week is an unreasonable interference with the reasonable expectation of the local area res residents. The applicant appellant disagreed. In conclusion, the applicant appellant requests the board hear their appeal. However, the appellant for Land Watch and others requests that the board not hear the appeal and deem the hearings official the final county decision. The decision is at the board's discretion. This concludes my staff report at this time. Thank you. Questions for staff? Any discussion about the, <coughs> the issue before us or other questions? Commissioner Lykin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So looking at the history, it uh, looks like to me a permit was not actually granted in the first place. Is that correct? That they basically, looks like here that the, uh, he started operation sometime in August, but was he doing this without an actual permit in hand? Correct. There was no land use permit for the three events that he held in August 2014. So it looks like to me that what happened is that uh, it looked like that the application itself looked fine. So did he make the assumption just because the application looked fine that he could go ahead and start operating, uh, assuming there would be a permit coming his way or a permit in hand? I'm not sure. I'd, I'd, I'd be obviously he or his representatives aren't here today, but I'd be curious on. I mean, usually not, when we've when my family used to build houses. Uh, I don't know. We had the permit at hand, and then. So, if I could interject for a yeah, minute, if you I, could, I'd, I'd appreciate this because I'm, I'm but kind what, of confused what here. We're, what we're here for is the decision of elect to hear or, no, not, or, or not to, and I don't want to discuss the merits. Okay, that, of, and of that's the, fine. Of the actual decision until we are either hearing and hearing yeah. the appeal as the board. Okay. But yeah, I just want to be careful that we don't. Um, start deliberating or do that where the applicant and the sure. opponents are not present to rebut or anything like that. Okay. So, so kind of that, that's fine. As, as we discuss this, if you can limit your discussion relative to the decision to hear or not. Okay. Um, at this time, that's what's before the board. We'll, we'll do. I mean, that and, that and that's fine. I was just trying to get my arms around this to, to 
try to figure out why the denial occurred in the first place, and then uh, the hearings official. Uh, okay, all right, that, that's fine. Okay. So you've, Just, you've answered what I what I want to know. So I'm I'm fine. So I, before we move on to some of the other commissioners, I do want to make note for the record that I have been contacted by both the applicants' uh, representatives and folks that support the applicant, and I've also been contacted by opponents and neighbors of the facility, and I have turned down uh, requests to meet with them repeatedly, knowing this may come before the board. Um, so that there wouldn't be any ex parte um, contact in, in when we get to a quasi-judicial proceeding if we choose to hear. So I just want to make people aware that I have been contacted by both sides of this because it is in my district, um, and I was aware that there was a controversy <coughs> out there. But I have been trying to refrain from allowing people to, to contact me externally of, 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 a, of the proceedings here. Um, so the, the question before us is, you know, do we want to hear this or not? Um, and, and I personally um, uh, kind of agree with um, the planning director's recommendation that we do hear it, partly because I believe it is of countywide significance and it will come up repeatedly. Um, in some of those contacts, people were throwing out um, other wedding venues uh, to my attention and asking why they weren't having the same issues and it turns out that one of the venues that was brought up was is operating without a permit and is probably going to be contacted by land management and facing the same process that this particular issue is and I'm sure at that time we are going to hear all of the same issues around noise and traffic and conversion of agricultural structures to another use in this case, a horse arena. Um, so, and, and then, of course, there was another site that was brought up that actually went through all, what is was an on-resource land for start. So it was on rural residential, and they went through all the permitting process to stay legal, and is operating legally under a permit. So, these rural wedding venue sites are going to continually to come up. It's not the first one that's come before the board. <coughs> We also had the one down near Cresswell that came before the board. The issue of how they impact neighbors, and this is no different than when we started the, this morning's discussion with the Large Events Task Force, is an interesting policy decision for the board. And I think one that, that requires guidance from the board possibly on into the future. Um, so I do think there is a, it, that it meets two of those criteria relative to needing to elect to hear, but I'll, I'll wait to hear from the rest of the board, see if there's agreement with that. Commissioner Stewart. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, no, I have to agree, and after reviewing this, that, um, you know, the two items that I think needs direction, as the planning director pointed out, uh, noise and traffic, which is something that um, comes up all the time, at least in the rural areas. And then the other piece, too, is, is that uh, conversion of an ag building to other uses, and that seems to be something that um, is pretty prominent, um, takes place pretty regularly, and if we're not supposed to allow conversions, then I think we need to, to understand that because <laughs> folks are, they'll take their ag building and turn it into a shop or other items that uh, seem legitimate for uses that are permitted. and why build a new structure when you can convert one. So I think um, I'm leaning towards uh, the fact that we probably ought to hear this one. Commissioner Farr. Thank you, Commissioner Wozovich. Um, you know, I'm trying to put things into context, into a uniform context, and uh, I'm, I'm not uh, disagreeing with, uh, with hearing this, by the way. I, I'm in favor of that. But uh, um, Ms. Clark, uh, there are weddings occurring all over the county. Uh, why this one? Why are we? Uh, I mean, why are we looking at this venue? Is this a complaint-driven uh, process? Uh, let me state also: we heard from Mr. Coles this morning that um, that the uh, taxation as and assessment department doesn't get out and, uh, and inspect properties for uh, tax purposes. And I would suspect that this may come under uh, under the purview of uh, taxation and assessment also. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to leave that to Mr. Cole as to whether or not. Uh, a farm deferral under the tax code may be affected by 
uh, events uh, okay. such as this um, hasn't come up, of course, in this case. I, um, I think this matter may have begun with a complaint um, for operating um, without, I think, the, the, any permit for home occupation. And I assume that's what triggered the initial application mm -hmm. in this case. So it's, uh, if, if it seems to be an, a non-uniform application of standards, rules, laws, et cetera, uh, land use, uh, is it because of it's complaint driven? Is that how things come to our attention is through complaint? Or do we have another mechanism to determine? Do we have somebody going out and saying, oh, it looks like a wedding over there. Maybe we should check this one out. So in this particular circumstance, they submitted their special use permit application with us in June, on June 13th. And then in August, they held three events. Okay. So they did submit the application, and then they had the events, and then the complaint was submitted, okay. and then we initiated a compliance case. So that's the sequence on this particular one. So this was triggered by them wanting to be in compliance and trying to be in compliance, and uh, just things got out of order timing-wise, it would seem, perhaps. Perhaps. In theory, yes. Okay. All right. And now that I'm not, I'm not rendering a decision on that by any means at this point in time. So uh, then that does come back to my other question. Um, if they had not initiated the permit, if they were just having the weddings, um, we that don't have a new matter for, for, we don't have the wedding police. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Funding for that patrol was cut off a while ago. It, I, I thought yes. it yeah. Uh, yeah, so then it's just a complaint driven. It is a complaint driven. Yeah. Okay. Much like the fact that I had my tent trailer on my street for two days and and the guy down the street gets to keep his and I don't get to keep mine. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Uh, if I can clarify a little bit, um, in this particular case, it's it's an event venue running as a commercial enterprise in, in resource zone land. And, and yes, weddings occur all over the county in rural areas, but if you choose to hold your daughter's wedding at your own house in rural areas, one thing, you're not you're not converting your property to a commercial use. Yeah. I presume that to be the case. Yeah, and, and that's really where these issues come up and we're having people convert uh, resource properties to a commercial use or, or even rural prop residential properties to a commercial use for events and whether they're adequately located and prevent um, you know, too much impact to neighbors, I think, is it, it, there's some standards and policy decisions that the board may need to take in those cases. But that's really, you know, we're not going after mom and dad holding daughter's wedding at, at home. And, and yeah. that wasn't the nature of my question. Really, it was, uh, you know, are there people out there saying, well, I'll do it for 85 bucks, but just don't tell anybody we did it. You know, I mean, people do yeah. it quasi-commercial. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, the one-offs are going to be difficult to police. But when somebody sets up a website and starts taking bookings for months in advance and it's going to be a repetitive thing over the whole summer for, for neighbors to bear, that's where you would get into into the, the whole issue of needing some kind of permitting process you know, to ensure health and safety and also you know, whether it's compatible with, with the neighbors. So the short answer to my question is yes. Okay, good. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So, um, it's an interesting issue, and it'll be, it'll be interesting um, to discuss because I'm particularly interested in, in how um, some of the wineries, which are located in resource lands, are able to hold events um, without going much beyond getting a tasting room. <laughs> so that, that'll be an interesting discussion of, of the juxtaposition. I understand there's some state law about um, wineries that kind of exempts them, and, I, and I'd, it'd be interesting to hear that because I know that they're neighbors of some of the wineries that are have issues with some of the events being held. So um, any other discussion to the issue of, of elect to hear or not to hear? Seeing none, is there somebody that wishes to make a motion? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, oh, before oh, Mr. Stewart sorry. starts, just to remind you um, of the order the motion uh, will probably pertain to, uh, and that is to set a hearing on the 5th of May, I believe. Two weeks, within two weeks. Within two weeks of the yeah. requirement, right. So it'll be the 5th of May, which is Tuesday. The parties um, will be uh, the county through its land management division, the applicant here, as well as the uh, one of the appellants, Land Watch. Um, 
And then just so, as you all know, it would be appropriate at that hearing to do any ex parte um, communication uh, acknowledgments. Yeah. So, yes. Which I've been trying madly to avoid. Um. <laughs> so I'm just looking at future agenda, and it looks like we do have one hearing already, the annexing of territory into the Lane Rural. But there's no other, so it seems appropriate to put it for May 5th. Okay. To, um, so if I just move the um, order, will that? Andy, do we need to note the Scribner's correction in the order as we make the motion? We, we will amend the order to make the correction that um, Ms. Wright read earlier. <coughs> So if you want to move the, the so, amended order. So I'll move uh, order 15-14-21-12 and um, electing to hear the appeal setting the hearing for May 5th at 1.30. Second. <laughs> we'll second. Yeah, yeah. I'll give the tie to Commissioner Farr. All right. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> um, with a caveat that there's nothing to do with the Battle of Puebla, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Uh, any discussion to the motion? Commissioner Sorensen. Um, I know that Oregon land use law um, says that uh, the state will make um, the requirements on cities and counties to make plans, make um, zoning, for their county or city, and then um, it leaves to the city or county how they're going to do that and lets them define how to do that. But um, then when there's disputes over it, uh, there's opportunities for people to um, make a complaint, have a contested case type hearing, and it's hearing on the record of what the facts are. Um, and it, it, this creates for uh, county commissioners uh, and for city councilors uh, the opportunity to both make law but also to interpret rules and interpret law. And I always think it's best if we spend our time making the rules, regardless of the outcome of this case, whether one side wins and the other side loses or or and, and maintains the current status of the case, or uh, the board changes it and and reverses the winner, it still won't really change any of the rules of the county. This provide uh, guidance thing is done via the mechanism of ordinances and board orders dealing with changing the ordinances of the county, not a case-by-case -case basis. Now it's true that somebody might interpret that later, but the but the main issue is whether we're going to really change the code or not. The code's already set. This is a question of interpreting the code. So I feel like the best approach isn't to make um, rules for our community based upon the specific facts of one case. It's rather to open up the matter uh, in a legislative type format where we take a take testimony from the public on what they want the rules to be and what we think the rules should be, and then we change our code. Many times we spend a lot more time on the contested case than we do actually changing the rule, and then what do you know? There's another contested case. We haven't changed the rules, <laughs> and we spend all this time on these cases when, in fact, what we should be doing is define the rules more carefully so that there are fewer disputes over what the code really means. So um, that those comments are, are by way of saying I don't think that the best way to make the rules is on a case-by-case -case basis. The best way is to say, no, the, the hearings official, you know, did their, did, made their decision and, and if people want to appeal that, they can. We're not cutting off their appeal rights, but we're basically saying it's, a, it's, a, it's an efficiency argument that we should be spending our time on changing the code 
if we want to change the code, if we want to change policy, if we want to change our policy. Because obviously county staff is interpreting county's policy. That's what the hearings official is doing. And that's what any appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals would do, is just look at the rules and apply those rules to as they understand them. So I, I really think we're in a better position to make, make the rules, uh, not be the judges of the rules. And I think that we'd be better off maintaining our role in the legislative context. Thank you. Further discussion? Commissioner Farr. Thank you. I, I don't have the legal background that Commissioner Sorensen has, but it seems to me that what, whatever rules we make, at some point there's going to be some interpretation as to uh, that, we, that we don't cover every single uh, eventuality in every single rule. So um, you know, I think about uh, we're, we're not judges, you know, so we don't uh, make judiciary decisions that uh, that are used by lawyers down the road. Um, however, I, I would guess at any time we interpret a rule that uh, land use attorneys would be inclined to uh, uh, look at our interpretation of a rule in the past and apply it to whatever action has been requested for the future. Commissioner Stewart. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, some years ago before I was a commissioner, I was involved. In a, my father was in a land use uh, application and uh, one of the things that I always felt that was important to me is is that um, <clears throat> once a rule gets enacted, that it's it's um, enacted the same on everybody. And um, the instance turned that the hearings official decided to go away from past practice of about 20 years and make a decision in the opposite direction. And so in this instance right here, I believe that it, um, there's two areas that um, were pointed out that um, staff has uh, allowed conversions of uh, ag buildings to other items, and that seems to be past practice. And in this ruling, really, it's um, a different decision. And also, uh, back in 2012, there was a decision by the or 2002, there was a decision by the board on, uh, I think specifically um, noise, but it might have been traffic, that um, is uh, was a different direction than what, what was uh, given in this hearing's officials' decision. So. Um, you know, I, I do think that uh, we do set the rules, but I also feel uh, it's important that we make sure that the rules are um, applied the same way and uh, as they were intended. And if at some point we don't uh, want those rules applied that way, then this board needs to make uh, a decision to change it, not necessarily a hearings official do it or somebody who makes a better case for a different decision. So. I'd just like to um, be consistent to make sure that folks know when they come in and make an application, they know what the rules are and do the best to uh, apply them fairly uh, with everybody's and honestly. Commissioner Lycan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, since SB 100 was uh, first adopted, uh, I find it interesting because I think our state, our county, and our communities have changed dramatically. And uh, I also find it interesting that no other state decided to so follow Oregon's so-called lead on that one. Um, anyway, I'd, so I, I actually think this is a good idea for us to take a look at this. I, and part of it is is I'm I'm kind of curious on some of the the uh, what what brought up by the that was brought up by the hearings official for one. But also, I think it's a whole broad context of our county. I mean, we're changing we're changing and constantly. And and uh, you know, SB 100 was first, I think, adopted in 1973. If I had a business and did not change over since 1973, I'd have been out of business 40 years ago, but uh, we're close to it. So I, I just think it's it's always good for, for us maybe to take a look at this. And so I appreciate staff actually recommending that we we uh, we hear this. I, th I think that'll be key as we move forward because I don't believe this will be the last time we hear something very similar to this. And, uh, uh, then we wasn't that uh, something similar that happened in Cresswell, and now we're now this one. So I think this is going to be an ongoing issue. People are looking to make a living here in Lane County, and they're looking for entrepreneurial ideas. And uh, so I think it's uh, I think this will make a lot of sense for us to hear, and uh, <clears throat> and see where we go from here. So I appreciate uh, I appreciate the recommendation, appreciate the comments from the board. Thanks. So I. I, I think in this case, you know, that normally, you know, the role of the board is to actually set the, the, the regulations and, and the laws in our code, and, and we normally don't 
sit in interpretation um, all the time. But, you know, we specifically have under the code the ability to hear these, these, these things for a reason. Um, and, and those reasons are described in, in our election to hear. And we've, we found two of the four criteria meet this case. And, and in, in particular, just, just the conversion of, of uh, ag structures to other uses. I think we need to put the board also on record as to whether or not that's something that's allowed in Lane County. Uh, that has huge countywide significance. If, it's, if we don't feel that there should be any ever conversion of an ag structure to another use, then we do seriously have some code to, to be rewritten. Um, but if, if we support the idea they can be converted, that's a whole different thing. And, and you know, ultimately, the appellant or the applicant can move this on to LUVA anyway once we've reached our decision here. Um, and, and there's further appeal process even beyond that. So uh, we're not the final <coughs> arbitrators of this. We could be, you know, if, if the sides all end up agreeing after whatever decision we come to. But I do think that there is precedence for us to, to hear this as a board. Um, so I'll be voting in support of the, the motion. Any other discussion to the motion? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, and this is just an order, uh, so it doesn't need to be a roll call. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion passes 4-1 with Commissioner Sorensen in opposition. Uh, Clarity, uh, could you read the motion out loud? Pardon me. For the, uh, it's okay. Move to approve the attached order electing to hear the appeal on the record and schedule the and on the record hearing with the Board of Commissioners within 14 days. Thank you. Which is May 5th. Yeah. 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 Margaritas. Um. <laughs> you may need them. <laughs> I need them afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So that uh, concludes the regular business. Thank you. Um, is it Deanna or? Deanna Wright. Deanna. I, sorry, I think I said Dina at first, so I apologize. Um, thank you, Deanna and Andy. Um, that brings us to review of assignments. Uh, Mr. Mokahyski. Uh Mr. Chair, we, in addition to your comments on the large events task force, the direction that you gave us, of course, for the um, interviews for the Lane County Sheriff tomorrow, uh, as well as uh, the number of motions that you took that I'm not going to repeat uh, related to our legislative agenda. The two uh, specific um, assignments that I heard were from Commissioner Lichen when we had head nods for uh, discussion with uh, between our legal counsel, both county counsel, district attorney, and I think also our health and human services staff uh, to look at the uh, policies and procedure and process uh, for uh, these commitment hearings that are happening at the state level and what, uh, who has what level of legal uh, jurisdiction in those. So we will take that one. What I heard is not a desire for a work session, but uh, let's try and get some answers and understanding around that. We'll work with legal counsel and staff to provide the board an update uh, on that. And then the second review uh, request uh, was from Commissioner Bozovich. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and I saw head nods for a work session to review uh, fire response preparedness. I heard specifically for West Lane County, but I'm thinking that you're meaning for really for all of Lane County. Yeah. Uh, it, it's um, it's going to be intended for the entire Lane County, but um, they want to start in West Lane County, my understanding, because there's fewer parcels to deal with. It'd be easier for them to get it up and done. Hope to have it finished in the first year, I believe, and then do uh, Eastern Lane the second piece. And, just for a little bit of additional clarity, at least the way I understood it when I was represented when I went to the East Lane meeting was that um, you know a piece of property starts out with hypothetically a, a piece of resource land that's F2. It's one big chunk and it's under and it's being assessed for um, <clears throat> fire protection and ODF uh, gets uh, resources for that. And then what happens is is that that piece of property may get broke up into multiple chunks of land. And what's been happening is, is that the um, 
assessment hasn't been following those changes in the land sizes and ownership. Therefore, they're not collecting um, what they believe is the um, possibly what they believe is the appropriate amount of money for lands that they have to protect. There's folks that aren't that uh, aren't receiving assessments that should be, and so the uh, the idea is to put together. It's I guess. My understanding is similar to Senate Bill 360, or it gives them the authority under 360 to put together this group of people to review these different assessments and make recommendations to the assessor to uh, make changes on the tax rolls. So the intent is, is just to try to get uh, resource land that they're charged with protecting, making sure that those folks are paying their assessments. Any other uh, assignments that were missed? Thank you, Mr. Roker Heisky. And we already dealt with having an executive session this morning. Is there any other business for the board today? If not, I, we will adjourn and reconvene tomorrow at 9 a.m. in the Board of Commissioners Conference Room for our meeting to appoint a new sheriff. So we are adjourned. Okay.